Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings once again, viewers at home. Welcome to our devotion where we will be looking at the character or personality of one of the disciples of Jesus Christ whose name was Nathaniel. Before we do that, let us pray. Father, we thank you for granting us this opportunity to listen to your word. May your Holy Spirit please be with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In John 1, we see Christ calling Philip to be his disciple. And Philip leaves and calls Nathaniel. This is what we read in John chapter 1. Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, we read in verse 45, and says unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, when we take a look at this text, we find that Nathaniel was sitting under a tree. We'll realize that as we read further. And Philip comes to him and he says to Nathaniel, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets have written about. This man, his name is Jesus. He is of Nazareth, and he is the son of Joseph. In other words, Philip was saying this with a bit of doubt. And Nathaniel himself was there when John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Nathaniel was praying wanting to see the Messiah that was promised. He was sincere in finding Jesus Christ. And when John said, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, Nathaniel looked at Jesus Christ and the appearance to him was not that of someone who could be the savior of the world. But he did not want to reject the message that this is the Lamb of God. So he went away and prayed to God the Father to confirm if indeed this is Jesus Christ. And while he was praying, God answered his prayer by sending Philip to tell him that we have indeed found the one whom Moses in the law spoke about, whom the prophets have written about. This man is Jesus of Nazareth. Now, Nathaniel, his name means God has given. And here came Christ who was given to the entire world. Nathaniel was from Cana in Galilee. We find that in John chapter 21, verse 2. He came from Cana. Now, Nathaniel was a disciple of Jesus Christ. He was led to Christ by Philip. Like some of us are Christians today, we have been led to Christ by our friends, our parents, by other people around us. It shows that when we hear the message about Jesus Christ, we should not keep it to ourselves, but that we should share the message with other people. So that's how Nathaniel came to know about Jesus Christ. Philip is the one who led him to Christ. Now, Nathaniel saw someone who is poor. The appearance of Jesus Christ was that of someone who has nothing. He comes from Nazareth. I mean, I think when Philip said, this man is of Nazareth, he made things worse for Nathaniel. Because Philip says, but Nathaniel says, but Philip, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? It's like he never believed that really this could be the man. 
I mean, Nazareth is a place of a low reputation. Jesus Christ born in such a place. And he asked that question in verse 46. Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? And, and what I love about Philip, he did not want to enter into an argument. He did not want to debate with Nathaniel like some of us do. You know, we, we sometimes want to, to debate and argue about the truth. Philip says, you know what, man? I'm not going to argue or debate with you. Come and see for yourself. That is verse 46. You know, th th there are words that are spoken by uh, Gloria Gaither. She says that people who love to argue are those doing the argument. People actually who, who love to do arguments, they, they, they love to argue. And we argue about so many things. You know, and she says that, but when the lame walk, when the blind see, when the deaf hear, when those who can't speak begin to hear, then arguments become important. Arguments become paralyzed. You can't argue because you have seen that this person was once blind as in any seeing. So Philip says, you know what, come and see for yourself. When Nathaniel saw Jesus Christ, there was a bit of that doubt in him. And he came a bit trembling as well. And when he was there, listen to verse 47. Jesus sees Nathanael, and he says to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guy. These words were an assurance to Nathanael that this is indeed the man we have been waiting for. This man is the answer to the prayer that I was making. And Nathanael asked Jesus Christ, Whence knowest thou me? And Jesus answers and says, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. I saw you praying under the fig tree. Before Philip came to you, how much more assurance would Nathaniel need? Because Jesus Christ has just given him everything. He says, I saw you before Philip even came to you. You know, when we want to come to Jesus, there is that faith. Christ would meet us halfway, like he did with Nathaniel. He gives him an assurance. You are an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guide. You are a sincere seeker of the truth. And God has answered your prayers. Now, the Bible continues in verse 40, 49. Nathaniel answers and says, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Master, I, I now believe that indeed you are the son of God. I now believe that you are the savior of Israel. You are the king, despite the outward appearance that I see on you, which may not be appealing to men, but I believe by faith that you are the king of Israel. And Jesus says to Nathaniel in verse 50, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, you now believe. Thou shalt see greater things than this. You know, there's something amazing about this one. Philip said to Nathaniel, come and see Jesus for yourself. Now, Nathaniel did not only see Jesus, but Nathaniel met Jesus. There are many people who see Jesus but they have never met him. Sometimes when we walk by the wayside, we see a lot of people, but it doesn't mean that we would meet those people. They can be passers-by. To some of us, Jesus is one of those people who just pass by, or we pass him by because we have just seen him. But when Nathaniel met Jesus, his faith in him was strengthened, which is very important. It is key that we all meet Jesus Christ. 
We go to church to meet people. We go to church, we see our pastors, our friends, our elders and deacons. But are we meeting Jesus when we go to church? When we go there, it's a place of gathering where we meet together. It is highly possible you can spend five hours in church and live without meeting Jesus. You can see your friends, you can see him, but unless you have a conversation with him, a personal relationship, your faith in him will not grow. We need that practical experience of faith in Jesus Christ. Then our faith will grow. Then we'll be able to work even for Jesus Christ. And he says to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. What you've just witnessed, these are just more things. Philip was there, Nathaniel was there, when, when John was baptizing Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove, he was there, he witnessed it. But Jesus is saying, you will see greater than this. You will see heaven being opened. The angels descending. You will be with me for the next three and a half years while I minister to those that are lost. It is key and important for us to know this Jesus. It doesn't matter where you come from, the background where you come from. When you hear that there is a revival taking place somewhere, make time to find yourself there. Not only to be with people, but to meet this guy. Many people have met him and their lives were changed. The lives of the fishermen were changed. The lives of those who were blind were changed. Some people would call him when they hear his voice and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. This is the man, when you come in contact with him, you realize how sinful you are and that without him, you are nothing. You would want to embrace him. You would want his character to be that of yours. You would want to always spend time with him. Because whenever you read the Bible, Jesus Christ was always surrounded by the multitude. Because there was something in him that the people could not find in the leaders of Israel during those days. I invite you today to come, not only to see Jesus, but to meet him. And once you have met this Jesus Christ, also send an invitation to other people to come and meet the king of Israel, the king of the universe, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. May God bless us and sanctify us as we meet with Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for these words where we have learned about the character and personality of Nathaniel. He never rejected the message of John when he said, Behold the Lamb of God. But he wanted assurance from you, Father. And while he was praying, you answered his prayer. And Christ saw him while he was praying. It's our prayer, even at this moment, that when we pray, seeking for an experience with you, you may visit us and answer our prayers, that our, our faith may be strengthened in you and your Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Father, be with us. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen.